Hey there, you good people on YouTube watching this video. We just recently launched our first Framer plugin. This is in collaboration with my good buddy or pal, Chris Nutbean. Uh, and yeah, it's exciting times, man. We finally got our first plugin out to market. It's available on the Framer Marketplace. Lots to celebrate there, but in this video, I wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about you know how we came up with the concept of our first Framer plugin, how we got it out to market, and what has been the journey so far, and what's the result of that journey for those of you guys who are actually considering launching your own plugins within the Framer Marketplace. All right, so story time. Let's talk about the launch of this entire plugin. It's called Device Mockups, currently available on the Framer Marketplace. What this plugin does is essentially helps you create beautiful device mockups for your Framer projects and the difference with using our plugin versus trying to find a, a mockups tool uh, online or you know using this traditional way which is finding a photoshop file that you know people have offered online and then kind of updating the asset you know exporting it and then uploading it on framer which seems a bit long-winded right that's how you would normally create a mock-up for your site and it's going to be a flat image that you just upload that is not dynamic that cannot be customized we thought let's create customizable mock-ups directly inside of Framer using uh, Framer's native component features, right? Which I'll get to in the context very soon. But before that, you know, context building, how did, you know, what led us to building this plugin? Well, I met Chris Nutbean earlier this year, getting in touch with the Framer team. They wanted help trying to create a London meetup. And so they connected me with Mo from their team who leads sort of business development. He's currently doing the whole Framer World Tour, which is really cool. Uh, and so part of that was to set up a core group of people that can host these meetups. And so they started with me and then I kind of reached out to the community and I found that Chris had already been doing something similar. So we got in touch and we really kind of had great synergy and we threw the first, um, this, well, this was, they already had a meetup prior to that, but. Uh, after that, we kind of made an official London Framer meetup by Framer. So we did it actually at the Atomico office, which is one of Framer's investors. And we hosted the meetup over there and it was great. It was, you know, fantastic. I actually did a little talk there and it was just so cool to kind of meet the rest of the community based in London. From that, you know, me and Chris got talking. We just realized our shared passion for Framer. And, you know, we'd been talking over the months that came after that, and we just really found the synergy and we thought, hey, let's get together and build uh, a suite of Framer products, right? Just for fun, just for the passion of it, because we love Framer so much. We already have our own businesses that keep us really busy. Those businesses are operationally heavy, but you know, as creators, as builders, you know, we wanna put our hands into uh, like, you know, the Framer product market. Uh, and so it just made sense for us to kind of partner together. Of course, two experts and two brains behind building a Framer-based kind of digital products business is just gonna have more impact than both of us working solo. And that was clear. Chris has an immense technical background. He's got a great design background as well, but his strong suit definitely is both in design, but mainly in the tech side, which is really helpful for me because that's where I'm lacking. I have a wealth of experience in the design side and the go-to-market side, uh, and of course the content creation side, but I struggle with the technical side, but I work closely with a lot of technical teams. That's why I've been able to build different SaaS companies, etc. So the partnership made a lot of sense. And so we started Interface, and the idea for Interface is is creating this digital products company that me and Chris can throw ourselves into and build a range of products that can support the Framer community from not just templates, but exclusive components, plugins, and even other resources that can actually help not just Framer designers and creators or builders, but also marketing teams that are start starting to onboard onto Framer, which is a big gap in the space right now. There's a lot of resources for designers within Framer, but a huge gap for actual marketing teams. And so we came together we started interface and the first plugin was the biggest question initially we thought we we're going to build a components library but of course after poking around the framer plugin marketplace we already noticed a bunch of solutions already rolled out within this category and we thought yes we want to do that at some point because we have some ideas that are a bit, a bit more unique to what's out there but it's not a dire need what was a dire need and I had been thinking about this for a while was mock-ups and I'll tell you why and how I discovered this was that I was on our uh, one of our company's uh, websites on framer this is my product Activity startup called Blitzit, and we're about to launch or at least tease the mobile app that's coming up. And I wanted to throw up a mock up of the mobile app on our Framer website. Now, I've got all the Figma designs available in a Figma file, but I didn't have a physical sort of like mobile device visual that was available directly on Framer. So, the only way to actually create a you know very compelling mock up of a mobile app for our Framer site was to first export a range of screens that I want to showcase as 
a teaser banner, put that into a software like a template that we can find for Photoshop or there's a bunch of other online mock-up softwares that you can find. And it's a long-winded workflow, right? You have to download the design on Figma, then upload it onto the mobile device mock-up and then export that and then upload that back on Framer, right? So it just seems like unnecessarily long-winded process. And I kept thinking about, well, now, how can we actually make this natively on Framer and make the process efficient? Luckily enough, I have a wealth of experience with creating mockups already because they're in my startup Glorify. We actually have a mockups feature. So at Glorify, the process is simple. We actually render these 3D objects and then we have to kind of set up the file in a way where the customizable section of that physical mockup can be updated. And so our users will just drag and drop the mockup they want to customize. And there's just a single button to actually customize the editable section and they can add any design they want and it will just seamlessly blend into the mock-up whether it's an apparel whether it was like a, a drink bottle or a can or some kind of cosmetic bottle we've got a range of kind of 3d assets that people can customize so i know that process really well and this is something our team has had a lot of experience with right and so we thought we could easily apply the same workflow on framer because framer already has components we can then create a placeholder for a screen as a component, manipulate the 3D properties to align it with the actual 3D mockup device. And once we figure that out, using variables, we are able to actually allow people to just take the main component itself and update the screen. But not only that, there's a lot of customizations we realized we could include. We had separate layers for shadow. We can also create variants inside of the component for different angles of the same device. And so we realized there's so much we can do with Framer's native component setting. Once we discovered that, we actually went into Slack and asked the Framer team what they thought about this idea. And you know, everyone loved the idea, which is of course, good validation for us to then just go ahead and pursue it. I spoke to Chris in terms of like the technical side, it was quite easy because we're using Framer's native features to actually really build these assets. Now we just need a delivery system, which is the plugin. And the plugin was really a simple tech stack. And Chris is super smart when it comes to this, like, you know, what, what could be the easiest way to kind of go to market with the simplest tech stack possible that easy to manage. And what we realized was just simply using Notion as our backend uh, and then connecting that with, you know, their kind of stack, which is super base. We put that together and now we're just managing all of the component content and the descriptions and the thumbnails inside of Notion. That then gets pushed directly into our plugin and voila, we got our plugin and people can just go to our plugin, pick the you know, mock-up they want to add to their file and click insert and the mock-up is just there ready to, for them to edit. Most of the challenges wasn't related necessarily to the plugin itself. And, and mind you, we are not using any custom overrides or custom components within these mock-ups. They're all of just Framer's native component features out of the box and just using variables. And we're actually quite proud of that, right? It's a very simple kind of build, but there were still some challenges, mainly with responsive rules for scaling, because you have these 3D mock-up visuals nested in a component, and then inside that component is a screen that's perfectly aligned to match with that 3D visual to give the illusion that you know, you've got this uh, screen that's uh, in 3D space, right? Now to manage the responsiveness of that was tricky because if a user would scale our components, sometimes the screen would misalign. And to control that, we had to really figure out the best responsive rules. And what we realized was relative scale, both height and width was what solved the kind of issue overall. And then we had to also use other variables for properties like 3D perspective is one. So they have the perspective property, which allows you to tweak the perspective. If you scale a mock-up, for instance, that has the perspective 3D property applied in the screen, then you would start to notice like the screen go a little bit wonky. And so to give the user back control, we had a perspective slider that allows the user to control the perspective of that screen to get it back into alignment. So those are two things we offered and people are really happy with that. In fact, people are quite pleased that they can have full control of these mock-ups, right? And yeah, so once we solved these challenges, we kind of took it to the next level. We had standalone mock-ups, which are just the kind of naked models by themselves in like a white background or clear background. And then we thought we could give even more value by actually placing these models in actual beautiful kind of studio style backgrounds, such as like a concrete theme and a rustic theme and like a neon theme and a bunch of different other kind of styles and, and aesthetics. We also included animation in them as well. So we can had we had other kind of supporting props and objects like rocks and bubbles and cubes and stuff like that. And just to really 
add more value to for the user, but also really it's about the visuals, right? Making the visuals really compelling and also as modular as possible. So that, you know, we had a wide range of themes that people can utilize in their projects to match different, um, you know, kind of styles of the brand that they're working with, right? So once we had the system in place, I got my team on board uh, from Glorify to help us fast track to our first 70 plus models. That's what we ended up counting. This includes the animated scenes as well. And that was published into the Notion database. Now that was available in the beta plugin that we had that was in development mode at that time. Then of course we had to figure out go to market, which was the next challenge. Let's talk about the go to market strategy for our device mockups plugin. What's really cool about this whole thing was that it was quite simple. Number one, we of course had to get a framer landing page set up. By the time we had our MVP version of our plugin ready, it was around like mid October. And we knew of course, a lot of people save their money for that whole Black Friday cyber week, which is between November and the first week of December. And so we didn't want to miss that opportunity. So now that we had most of our assets ready within the plugin, the plugin was pretty much developed. We already spoke to the Framer team uh, and they were eager to actually push it out. They're very happy with what we built. And so that was of course very motivating for us. So the next step for me was to throw up a landing page so we can start a sort of early access campaign of device mockups before it was even available in the Framer marketplace, just to kind of build some hype towards the launch. So to fast track the landing page design, I actually used one of my templates called Wisdom, which is available in the Framer marketplace. Now this template is a knowledge hub template, so not relevant to like a product launch or anything like that, but the design language is so simple that you can actually customize it for any use case. In this case, I actually reuse those components to build the device mockups plugin landing page. And we even made a whole kind of like marketplace uh, discovery section where we can actually display all of our device mockups uh, for people to explore and see what they look like before they actually bought the plugin. We also had a dedicated page for our device mockup scenes as well. And also we had a dedicated freebie page, of course, because we want people to get a taster of what we are building. And from here, you can actually copy any of our free components, paste them in your framer file, and essentially just give it a try. So once the landing page was ready, we decided to announce it on Twitter. And then at the same time, we thought it'd be smart to actually announce a giveaway as well. So there would be three winners and all everyone had to do was comment within the thread of that post, as well as retweet that post uh, so that we can get as maximum reach as possible. And anyone that did those two things would essentially qualify for the giveaway. And so we ran the giveaway for a week. And what was interesting is that even though the device markers plugin wasn't already available in the framework marketplace, we were already, already getting pre-sales within from our landing page because Lemon Squeezy was up, people can actually purchase the licenses beforehand. And I think the reason was because we already had the freebies page available so people can actually explore what we're actually offering. And I also had a tutorial page where people can actually see how the plugin actually works. And so those two elements bought people's confidence. People also somewhat knows me. I have not a huge audience, an audience of about a thousand people uh, followers within Twitter. Uh, and so that no doubt helped as well. And Chris also has his own following both in Twitter and LinkedIn. And so you push it out and that was really our go-to market. The following week, just before we announced the winners, the Framer plugin was already launched in the marketplace. So we were already starting to get feedback and we were encouraging people to retweet what they were creating with uh, our mockups plugin, which is really cool to see because of course seeing is believing and other creators were using it. And I think what was unique about our plugin was that within our policy, we also included that people can actually use device mockups assets within their framer templates as well, because that's a huge market. We know a lot of creators would love to showcase beautiful mockups within their framer templates that their customers can actually customize. And of course, that's a risk for us because we're giving essentially offering our assets for free in a sense, like people that buy those templates will then gain access to our assets. But in return for that, we just simply ask within the policy that you credit us, right? So that was the main policy. You can use it in templates as long as you credit us. And I think a lot of the creators found that really valuable, that they can actually use our assets in their templates. And so people were showcasing what they were creating on Twitter uh, and we were retweeting that. And then we announced the giveaways. The people that won the giveaway were really happy. And of course, then they retweeted that once they were announced as the winner. And once they started digging their fingers into the plugin and creating stuff, they started retweeting that as well. And so the campaign were overall was quite healthy. And we then also launched it in the Framer community. And then Chris also launched it in the contract community. And then my YouTube tutorial also had its own traction because of course, all of you guys who are subscribed to this channel, a lot of you guys discovered the plugin within the YouTube video for the first time. And that also led to some more sales. And all in all, it was pretty cool. For such a short time towards the buildup of the launch, you know, it did pretty well. I think up to date, we've just crossed over $2,000 in revenue, which in hindsight isn't huge 
range, but we also have a, a, a growing list as well, because mind you, we also have a free license included with the plugin, which gives you access to a few of the assets for free. And we know for sure, as we keep adding value to the plugin, adding more mockups, adding more scenes and richer quality of content within the mockup plugin, uh, we're very confident once we do another launch, maybe next year, Black Friday, now that we have more popularity and people know who we are, we're gonna, of course, get way better results. So for a very short lead up time with you know barely any time for any pre-marketing, literally the pre-marketing was about one week, uh, we're quite happy with the results. But of course, one of the coolest aspects of all of this is just the experience of launching a plugin in the Framer Marketplace. And we had so much fun with the launch. It wasn't like stressful to put this product together. It was just very enjoyable. But more than anything, it's about the value we've been able to provide within the Framer community. It's really fulfilling to see other Framer creators use Device Mockups plugin to create beautiful 3D hyper-realistic mockups and showcase visuals of their application or website, whether it's for an actual tech company or you know, perhaps it's an agency or freelancer showcasing their work. There's so many use cases for it and we're very proud of course to see that. And that's only given us more motivation and excitement to keep building on top of that and rolling out more assets. But more than anything, this has also kind of solidified mine and Chris's first time collaboration. And we're just more excited now to work together to push out new resources for the Framer community. And in fact, we already started to build our next Framer plugin, which is called FrameGen. It's an AI image generator built for Framer designers, just like yourself. So we're super excited about launching FrameGen to the public very soon, and very likely within the first weeks of January. So do stay tuned for that launch. But yeah, I'm super pumped and excited of just participating within the Framer ecosystem and launching a new sort of digital products business as a side hustle with my friend Chris, uh, and very excited to about what's to come. But stay tuned to my future videos. I'm going to be talking about my recent launch with my other startup, Blitzit, which has you know, kind of blown through the roof, which is really incredible. I'm really proud of that. So stay tuned for those. And look, if you're new here, do smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Other than that, I'll catch you in a future video and never stop building.